Welcome everyone to language skills video number 29. Today we're having one passage with more than one question. We're discussing which skill each question tests you in with the rule and the skill that you're supposed to be trained on. As you can see, this is one passage divided into three paragraphs, each paragraph with more than one question. And one important thing that we need to understand and we need to always remember when even dealing with language skills questions that we cannot neglect the meaning, we cannot neglect the reading skills because they are all integrated uh, to let us get to the correct answer. Let's start reading. More and more of our lives are mechanized and at some point we have to start wondering What's the limit of that mechanization? Many factory workers in the 19th century thought their jobs were safe, but we know now they were wrong. Many people in today's world believe their jobs are safe, but how safe are those jobs really? Studies around that ask whether man or machine is better at particular tasks, and the results are not always so obvious. Sure, a machine is obviously better at, say, welding huge pieces of steel together, but what would you say if someone told you people are more likely to open up to a machine than to a psychologist, or that a machine could write a quicker, more efficient news story than an experienced reporter could? These questions may seem overly pessimistic or overly optimistic depending on your point of view. However, some recent studies have been truly remarkable. Take Ellie, a computer program used primarily to diagnose patients with depression, PTSD, and other mood disorders. Many patients found it easier to talk to Ellie than to a real person. She did not react in some of those seemingly judgmental ways that a person would, and her voice never broke. On top of that, she could help psychologists to diagnose mental illnesses better than human observation could. She could detect facial movements or voice tones that a person might have not heard or ignored. While the battle of man against machine rages on, the questions will persist. No matter who wins, though, humans will almost assuredly find ways to adapt. That's something we have been doing for thousands of years, which is something that no computer can say. The whole text is talking about whether it's a machine or a human. Okay, who is better or what is better? And the example, the very clear example that is used here is uh, the computer program that people would open up to um, instead of opening up to a psychologist. We'll start with the first paragraph with the first three questions. The first question is asking about this underlined part. Many factory workers in the 19th century thought their jobs were safe but we know now that they were wrong. And then the second question is asking about the second underlying part. Many people in today's world believe their jobs are safe. The third question is asking about this third underlying part, which is sure a machine is obviously better at say welding huge pieces of steel together. So let's discuss one by one. We know what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to check whether the underlying part in each question is correctly used or not. If it's correctly used, so directly we go for A. If it's not correctly used, first we need to detect the mistake. Where is the mistake? Where is the problem in this uh, underlying part? And then you go for the choice that corrects the mistake. Okay, the first underlying part, so let's start from the beginning. More and more of our lives are mechanized, and at some point we have to start wondering, what's the limit of this um, mechanization? Many factory workers in the 19th century thought their jobs were safe, but we know now they were wrong. 
Okay, look at this um, uh, structure here. Many factory workers in the 19th century thought their jobs were safe. This is a complete independent clause. And then we have the word but, and then we have another independent clause, which is we know now that they were wrong. So the rule that we are tested in here is combining two independent clauses using but, which is one of the fanboys. So how should we do it? Actually, the rule says that uh, when we combine two independent clauses um, with fanboys, we have to put a comma before any of those conjunctions that we call coordinating conjunctions. What are the fanboys? There are seven coordinating conjunctions, um, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. So what we have here is the word but, which is one of the fanboys. What should we put before the word but? We should put a comma. So which one should we take? We should take B. The second question asking about, in today's world, believe their jobs are safe. Actually, in this part, we are, we are being tested in two skills here. The first one is using apostrophes, and the second one is homophones. So when I say many people in today's world, should I put an apostrophe S after the word today? Yes, I should. Why? Because I mean the world of today. So it's either you express the possession by of or by an apostrophe S. So we have to put an apostrophe S. That's why B and C are out. Okay. Then using the homophones, we have the word there. And in the choices, we have there, T-H-E-R-E. -E, we have there, T-H-E-I-R. And we have there, uh, there uh, which is they, and then apostrophe R-E. Actually, what do we need? We need a pronoun that refers to the antecedent people. Many people in today's world believe their jobs. Their jobs means the jobs of those people. So uh, which one should we put? We should put the possessive form, which is uh, T-H-E-I-R. So which one should I take? Actually, I would take D. Third question, studies abound that ask whether man or machine is better at particular tasks, and the results are not always so obvious. Sure, a machine is obviously better at, say, welding huge pieces of steel together, but what would you say if someone told you uh, people are more likely to open up to a machine than to a psychologist? So what we have to do here is to check the meaning of the sentence and uh, the punctuation which we have to use. A machine is obviously better at, so better at what? Better at welding. Yes. Um, what about the word say? What is it? Actually, say here, this is an interrupter. This is a, a word that could be omitted without uh, affecting the meaning of the sentence. If we have an interrupter in the middle of a sentence, we have to put it between two commas. Why? Because we are giving a focus here about the emotion or the idea, the concept that it gives. This concept, as we said, could be deleted without affecting the grammatical meaning of the sentence, but it adds to the emotions of the sentence. So what we have to do is to put say between two commas. That's why we are going to put it as C. The next paragraph has four questions. The first question is asking about your point of view and then the punctuation before however. The second question or question number five is asking about depression, PTSD and other mood disorders. The uh, question number six is asking about this part to a real person and then we start a new sentence, she did not react. 
Okay, and the last question in this paragraph is talking also about the punctuation of this part. Let's discuss one by one. For question number four, these questions may seem overly pessimistic or overly optimistic depending on your point of view. Okay, here we are having a complete independent clause. And then we have the word however, and then we start a new independent clause. Some recent studies have been truly remarkable. What do we have to do? What is the rule of combining two independent clauses with um, a, a transitional word in the middle? Actually, we have to put semicolon, then the transitional word, and then a comma, and then you start the second independent clause. Okay. So this is one skill. The second skill is the use of your or your, your, Y-O-U-R as one word, or your, U-O-U, and then apostrophe, um, R-E, as you are, which is also a homophone. So what do we have to do? So we have to think of the two skills. The first one is the use of homophones, your or your. Actually, we have to use a possessive pronoun that is used as an adjective. So it's either we take A or B because your in C and D means you are, which is a wrong use. We don't need it here. The second skill that we have to think about is the use of transitional words between two independent clauses those transitional words have to be preceded by a semicolon and followed by a comma. So the answer here actually would be A. Why? B, wrong, because however is between two commas, which is wrong punctuation. For question number five, let's read the sentence. Take Ellie, a computer program used primarily to diagnose patients with depression PTSD, and other mood disorders. Actually, this is the skill of listing using commas. So when we have a list with more than one element, we put a comma between elements until we reach the last element, we put a comma and or a comma or. So what do we have to do here is to check whether we have correct punctuation or not. Actually, in A, we don't have a correct punctuation. Why? Because we have a comma after depression, but after PTSD, we don't have a comma. So this is wrong. Um, in B, depression, comma, PTSD, comma, and other, that's a correct punctuation. In C, depression, comma, PTSD, comma, and, comma, other. This is wrong because with the last element, we don't um, separate the and from the element. And then the last choice, depression, comma, PTSD, and, comma, and other. Okay, the word other here is uh, used as an adjective, and we do not separate the adjective from the word modified. So we don't put a comma after the word other. The answer here should be B. For question six, uh, many patients found it easier to talk to Ellie than to a real person. And then we have Colin, and then we have she did not react in some of those seemingly judgmental ways that a person would. Okay, the first rule or skill that we are tested in, do we have parallelism? Do we have logical comparison here? Because we have the word easier, and then we have the word than, which is comparison tools. So talk to Ellie, then, to a real person. Actually, the sentence should be, many patients found it easier to talk to Ellie than uh, uh, talk to real person. So instead of repeating the word talk, we just have to put the word to. So is it correctly used or not? Actually, it's correctly used in A. 
Then let's go for the second part, which is she did not react in some of those seemingly judgmental ways that a person would. This is a complete independent clause, okay? So is it correctly used with the punctuation here? We have two independent clauses. One starts with many patients and the other one, she did not react in, uh, in some of those seemingly judgmental ways. Do we have a correct punctuation between the both? Actually, yes, we do have. Why? Because Colin is used to combine two independent clauses when the second one is an explanation of the first one. So when I say she did not react in some of those seemingly judgmental ways that a person would, this is a reason, this is an explanation why many patients found it easier to talk to Ellie. Actually, the answer here would be A, because it's correctly used. If we go for B, C, and D, we will find that the problem is about the punctuation between the two independent clauses. In B, this is a comma splice. We cannot combine two independent clauses using only a comma. In C, if we have one of the fanboys, as we said in the previous question, we do not put a semicolon before it. This is number one. Number two, we don't have a shift in, uh, so we can use the word but. So it's wrong punctuation and wrong meaning of the conjunction. In D, to a real person, and then we start it directly, the second independent clause, that's what we call a run-on sentence. As for question seven, We'll start from many patients. Many patients found it easier to talk to Ellie than to a real person. Very good. And then we have a column. And then we'll have the explanation why they found it easy to talk to Ellie. So the first part of explanation, she did not react in some of those seemingly judgmental ways that a person would. That's independent clause number one that gives the first uh, way of explanation. And then we have another independent clause, and her voice never broke. That's another reason. So between the first reason and the second reason, we have comma and, which is correctly used. And then we have, um, on top of that, that's a new piece of information. It's not adding to the explanation because it talks about Ellie and the psychologists, not Ellie and the patients. So on top of that, she could help psychologists to diagnose mental illnesses better than human observation could. So as we said, that's new piece of information. And on top of that, that uh, that's a prepositional phrase used at the beginning of the sentence. So how could we uh, uh, make correct punctuation between and her voice never broke and the new piece of information, on top of that, she could help psychologists. Actually, if we put um, uh, on top of that directly after broke, it would be run in sentence. So A is excluded. If we put a comma uh, and then on top of that, it will be comma splice. We cannot uh, combine two independent clauses using only a comma. And if I take D never broke, and then I put a semicolon. Semicolon is correct, but you cannot separate on top of that from each other. You cannot say on top and then a comma and then of that because you cannot separate the preposition in the parts of the prepositional phrase. So the answer here would be C never broke, and then you put full stop, and then you start totally new piece of information which is not an additional part of the explanation of why many patients found it easier. But this is totally new about the relationship between Ellie and psychologist. The answer here would be C. Then we have the next paragraph. Uh, it has three questions, eight, nine, and 10. The uh, first question, this paragraph, question eight, is talking about the use of apostrophes. And then question nine is talking about a positive phrases and the, the punctuation used with a positive phrases. And then question 10 is talking also about apostrophes. 
Okay, let's discuss one by one. For question eight, let's start reading whether Illy is the way of the future is yet to be determined. We cannot know right now, but there is no question that she raises some interesting questions, not only about the work of psychologists, but also about all of what we think are definitely human activities. Okay, look at the underlying part, the work of psychologists. Actually, as we said at the beginning of the video, if we use of, we cannot use an apostrophe because this would be redundancy. This would be unnecessary repetition. So if I said, as the example shown to you here, uh, a student's uniform, it would be this, the uniform of a student. You cannot use both together, the apostrophe and the preposition of that expresses position. Okay. So how many psychologists do we have? Actually, we're talking about many psychologists, as if you remember from the previous paragraph. So which one should I take? As we said, if I have of, I cannot put an apostrophe. That's why A is out. If I take B, psychologist work, there is no connection between psychologists and work, which is wrong. Then let's go for C, the work of psychologists, which is correct, actually. And then if you go for D, the work of psychologists, it has two mistakes. It has uh, an apostrophe S with of, which is redundancy. And we are talking about psychologists in plural form, not in singular form. For the next question, question nine, on the other side of the discussion, however, there is some evidence that humans may have the upper hand in some of the more basic tasks, those learned before the age of about 10. Humans have a huge upper hand. Okay, this part, those learned before the age of about 10, this is actually an appositive phrase used as an adjective phrase to modify the word tasks. And it comes in the middle of the sentence. So how should we put it? We will consider that this is an interrupter and we put it between two commas. So the answer here would be D. Next question, question number 10. Computers can do the complex thinking, but one thing with which they have a lot of trouble is paradoxically simplicity. Sure, a computer can tell your washer and dryer what a perfect washing and drying cycle is, but can it fold your laundry? Actually, no, it cannot. So what should we do here? A computer can tell your washer and dryer. How many washer and how many dryer do you have? Actually, we have you or you have one washer and one dryer. Should we put an apostrophe S? Actually, no. Why? Because we still have this possessive pronoun, which is your. And we said if you are using a possessive pronoun, we don't need an apostrophe S to express any uh, possession. This is number one. Number two, if we are putting the S here to modify or to uh, um, indicate plural, actually, we have only one washer and we have only one dryer which is logic here. So the answer here would be B. Can tell your washer and dryer. So only one washer and only one dryer. The last question, while the battle of man against machine rages on, the questions will persist. What do we have to start with here? This is the word while. And what is while? This is a subordinating conjunction. Okay, so what is the rule that we are using here? It's the rule of combining two sentences or two clauses. One of them is subordinate and the other is independent. Where is the subordinate clause? While the battle of man against machine rages on. Where is the independent clause? The questions will persist. So what do we do if we start with the subordinating conjunction? Okay, we have to put a comma between 
the subordinating clause and the independent clause. So which one should I take? Actually, I should take D. And I cannot capitalize the word the because the whole thing is one structure. We call it a complex sentence. So it's just one sentence, complex sentence, which consists of one subordinate clause and one independent clause. So you cannot capitalize any word in the middle unless it's a proper noun, of course. Okay, so the answer here would be D. Hopefully this would help you refresh your mind about all the skills and rules that we discussed in this video. Waiting for your feedback and questions on English for Fun English Skills at gmail.com. And until we have another new video, best of wishes.